Is a Tesco meal deal really that bad? Let's get into it. So I have a typical meal deal. Now, me and my right-hand man went in and thought, what would be the common thing that people would get? So we got the sandwich, the crisps, and the, the drink, which is obviously usually what you pick and mix and match. Now, every meal deal is gonna be slightly different, but I'm gonna go delve into really what's in this and is it actually good for you or bad for you? And could it be really fucking up your results when it comes to your body? and your mind as well. So I picked up a smoked ham and cheddar sandwich. I pick, we picked up the chili heat wave Doritos and the sugar free, actually the zero Coke, zero sugar Coke. Now this is a typical sandwich bag of crisps bottle of pop or sandwich bag of crisps bottle of water. What most people get for a work lunch or work bait because it's easy grab and go, it's cheap. It was three pound fucking 40 for this. That is cheap for a lunch, for a meal, very fucking cheap. Let's get into it. So through these three things, Calorie wise, 645 calories as a whole. Now there's zero calories in this, it's zero calorie show, uh, Coke. Believe it or not, in this one bag of crisps, 240 calories in here. 405 calories in the sandwich. Well, now, whilst that might not seem particularly bad, it's not like thousands and thousands, it's maybe, you know, if you're having three meals a day, you're still going to have around the same six to 800 calories, you're probably still gonna be in your calorie range. What we don't understand about a lot of this food is what's actually in it. Over these three items of food and drink, we have a total combined ingredient list of, wait for it, 51 different ingredients. Now there's three things on this table. Why is the 51 things amongst three things? See, this is what we don't take into account when we're looking to get healthy. Now, obviously the majority of my content's gonna be talking about calories and losing weight and getting fit and getting in shape. Now, obviously that's gonna involve increasing your protein levels, getting some adequate resistance training in, doing body weight training, getting fit, using your heart health, your cardiovascular health, etc. But when it comes to getting healthy, we can't continually eat loads of processed crap like this and expect to feel good. Even if we're losing weight, again, calories is gonna be the main thing for you if, you if weight loss is your goal. You need to get these right. And whilst these calories are not that bad, the chemicals and the other things in the food are worth looking at. If we take the sandwich, like I said, 405 calories in the sandwich, not that bad calorie wise, but ingredient wise, you're looking at 23 ingredients just in this one sandwich. It's not just bread, ham and cheese. You might think like what's in the ham? What's in the bread? What's in the cheese? It's everything in between, right? It's all the stuff that they put in it. When we consume more processed foods, evidence shows that over time, processed foods contribute to a very, very unhealthy living environment inside yourself and your gut. Eventually, that could lead to extreme things like cancer. That could lead to extreme things like diabetes, high blood pressure, things that are detrimental to your health, not just physical health, but also mental health as well. What we eat has a direct impact on how we're feeling our head, right? And we don't realize that, that sometimes some of these foods and ingredients can, over time, and again, this is, I may be taking an extremist view here, but do your research and you'll find out for yourself. Some foods and chemicals that are in food can pass what we call the blood-brain barrier, which means it can negatively impact your actual brain function. And we know this when we feel lethargic and tired and ratty and stuff. It's often based on the foods that we eat and the chemicals inside them. Those foods. Inside here, you've got 23 different ingredients in this one sandwich. You've got things like loads of wheat flour, which again is not a health food at all. You've got you've got reformed ham, you've got uh, rapeseed oil, seed oils, you've got mono and diacetyl tartaric acid esters of mono and diglycerides of fatty acids. I don't even know what that is, but does that sound healthy to you? Definitely not. Now again, I'm going, obviously calories is gonna be the main thing if you're looking to lose weight and, and, and get healthier, ultimately. But we have to consider the chemical side of it. We have to consider in these crisps, 21 ingredients in these crisps, right? 21 ingredients, it's not just potato and oil, it's flavorings, it's wheat, it's soya protein, it's monosodium glutamate. Now let's start, monosodium glutamate is what they put in a lot of Chinese food, which basically enhances the flavor, but also gets your brain tingling. It tingles your taste sensors to say, I want some more. It's a chemical that a lot of food companies put in to make you want more. Interesting that, isn't it? And makes you think, oh, this is so nice, give me more. But ultimately what's gonna happen if you keep having more processed fats and more processed carbohydrates in your diet, you're gonna feel more unhealthy. And what when you're having chemicals in to say, give us some more, give us some more, give us some more. It tricks your brain. So the more we eat of this shit, the worse we feel. Now Coke Zero, not that bad. Obviously a much better choice than full fat Coke as we call it. Hell of a lot less calories. We don't realize how many calories we're drinking when it comes to fizzy drinks. So a Zero Sugar, a Pepsi Max, a Diet Coke, a Coke Zero is a much better choice than a full fat version, shall we say. But still again, chemicals. Here's the thing, from time to time, I may enjoy a bag of crisps. 
from time to time, actually quite, I like a Pepsi Max. A couple of times a week, I have a Pepsi Max. I love the taste of it, but not every day. From time to time, very rarely now, I might enjoy a sandwich. If you have this like now and again, it ain't gonna be that bad for you. But if you're having this every lunchtime at work, Monday to Friday, or maybe you get a treat on a Friday or whatever, then you are needing to seriously look at what you're consuming. Not just from a calorific standpoint, but from a chemical standpoint. From a standpoint of actual health. This is very calorie high, okay, like I said, 645 calories, but in terms of nutritional value, there's actually very little in this, very little. Here's a way to look at it. It's always best to consume much more foods in your diet that are more or less single ingredient. An easy way to put this into perspective is 23 different ingredients, 21 different ingredients, seven different ingredients, one ingredient. It's just an orange. Nothing else on this. It's an orange. Seven ingredients. 21. 25. We keep eating processed shit too frequently. We're gonna get sick. We're gonna get ill. We're gonna get unhealthy. It's not to say you can't eat this stuff. You can. But make sure 70 to 80% of your diet is from single ingredient foods like chicken breast, meats, fish, nuts, fruit, vegetables. And 20% is from garbage like this. Is it bad? Not really. When taken every now and again. Is it bad to take this every single day of the week? Yes. Yes, it's not going to do your health any good and you should start looking at eating more of this stuff and less of this stuff. That's just my opinion. Go research it. Go have, go have a look at it and look at your own diet. If you're out of shape and feeling tired, considering this stuff is probably contributing to it. Have a great day. If you'd like to learn how to create outstanding levels of energy, motivation and self-control, my second book, Supercharged, The Modern Day Guide to Doing Exactly That, is out now.